So in this uh, lesson, we're going to talk about some terminology uh, that you'll see throughout the course. Um, and the buildup here uh, initially is going to be um, constructing an angle. Uh, so to construct an angle, we're actually going to take two rays. Uh, so there's one ray, there's the other ray, and we'll call the angle between them angle theta. Now, uh, when you have these two rays put together, uh, there's going to be the vertex of the angle so that if we were to label these maybe A, B, and C, um, we could say that we have angle ABC. We could also say we have angle CBA. So that vertex is really, really important uh, in constructing an angle. Uh, some of the other things you might see from time to time, and maybe even more commonly, uh, would just be angle B, or what I'll use most of the time is just a representation of the angle by uh, theta. Uh, so we've got two rays put together to construct an angle theta. Um, if the angle theta was created by sweeping out one side, um, then where it started would be considered the initial side. And where we end, that ray would be considered the terminal side. So the initial side and the terminal side, uh, all dependent upon the, the direction in which the angle theta was traced out. Now, um, what I have drawn up here is a free-floating angle. Uh, most of the angles that we discuss and that we uh, work with are going to be angles, not free-floating necessarily, but... Um, oriented on a coordinate plane or a coordinate system. Uh, so we say that those angles are in standard position. So an angle in standard position has two things. Uh, the vertex is at the origin and the initial side is on the positive x-axis. So if I draw a picture here, there's my x-axis, there's my y-axis. Um, an angle in standard position, we might have our initial side right here on the positive x-axis. Uh, I won't always draw the little arrow here, but just to help out in the first picture, I'll put an arrow there. Um, and then I'll have the terminal side. Notice the vertex is at the origin. And here would be our angle between those two rays. And we'll say it's traced out in a counterclockwise motion. So um, an angle in standard position, again, is far more helpful uh, for most uh, situations. So that's primarily what we'll be dealing with. Now, to go a little bit further with this, though, and something that might be a little bit unexpected, if I go ahead and construct a circle uh, in this xy plane, and I'm going to try to do so so that the origin is, is the center, um, this arc right here, this is also now called the intercepted arc. And the reason I say this might be a little unexpected is because even though we're studying uh, trigonometry, which is the study of triangles, all of it stems from the idea of a circle. Uh, and so we'll see that quite a bit um, throughout this section and throughout the entire course. So the next thing that we're going to talk about now is how to measure these angles. Uh, and the first um, measurement we're going to talk about would be degree measure. Uh, this is something that you're, you're, most of you are, pro are probably uh, somewhat experienced in. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll draw the xy plane here. Uh, and I'm actually going to go ahead and put in a circle as well to help out with this. Now, when we start here in standard position, remember our initial side is on the positive x-axis and our vertex is at the origin, um, you can see that we would have an angle of zero degree if we were just right along here. As we start to, to go counterclockwise, um, this would be 90 degrees, this would be 180 degrees, we have 270 degrees, and then we're back to where we started, which is 360 degrees. Um, and the reason why the circle hopefully is helpful is because most people understand that there's 360 degrees in a circle. Um, a couple of the other ones worth pointing out. Um, here we might have uh, 30 degrees, maybe a 45 degrees, halfway between 0 and 90. Um, and then up here we might have 60 degrees. Uh, and so we could keep going as long as we needed to. 
uh, but I think that's pretty good for now. Now, um, I didn't mention uh, that as these angles were being traced out in a counterclockwise direction, uh, we come up with these degree measures. Um, now keep in mind, if we go counterclockwise the way I have uh, just a moment ago, all of these angular measures are positive. If I were to trace these angles out in a negative direction or a clockwise, then the angular measures would be negative. And so for example, if I went clockwise, this would be a negative 90 degrees. This would be a negative 180, a negative 270, and then we're back to a negative 360 degrees. Uh, so the negative is only dictated by the direction in which the angle is traced out. So now, a couple of different types of angles worth mentioning here. Um, an acute angle uh, would be an angle that measures between zero degrees and 90 degrees. So maybe something that looks like this. An obtuse angle would be something that measures between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Maybe something like that. Um, a right angle is a 90 degree angle. And so to denote that, most of our pictures aren't perfect, so to denote that we put that little box there in the corner. Uh, and then a straight angle, the angle would equal 180 degrees. So essentially a straight line. So that would be our theta right there. So a couple angles to keep in mind. Now, coterminal angles, um, these, are, these are very, very important angles for a variety of reasons. Uh, we'll see a lot of them throughout the course, um, but their names are very telling. Coterminal angles uh, means that they're angles that share a terminal side. So when we look back at that picture a few moments ago of our circle, and for example, I said that might have been 45 degrees, uh, a coterminal angle would be an angle uh, with a degree measure that put our terminal side at the exact same place. And so um, to figure that out and to, to kind of think about it intuitively, um, if I'm at 45 degrees and I go around the circle one time, I just went around 360 degrees, it puts me in the same place. Uh, so um, what we say is that alpha and beta are coterminal if the measure of beta equals the measure of alpha plus k times 360 degrees. And that k that we have, that is an integer. <clears throat> so integers being allowed to be positive or negative, the negative just would say that if we start here at 45 degrees and we go around now the other direction, we're still going to be at the same place. Uh, so. Uh, coterminal angles, again, they share a terminal side. Um, to come up with them, uh, you can add or subtract uh, 360 degrees, which is the number of degrees in a circle. So in the first example, we're going to look at um, two positive and two negative angles that are coterminal with 45 degrees. Um, and so if I start here with the two positive uh, if I take 45 degrees uh, from the last conversation, we know that if we add 360 degrees, uh, we'd get 405, which is coterminal with 45. If I add another 360 degrees, that gives me a 765 degrees, which again is also coterminal with 45. Uh, as for the two negative coterminal angles, if I start at 45, now I would move in the opposite direction and so I would subtract 360, which would give us 315. If I subtract another 360, I get a negative 675. And so all four of those boxed in angles are coterminal with 45 degrees. They would still put our terminal side the same place as our 45 degree angle.